I'm going to show you how to create a high gloss finish like this one. It's really not too difficult. This is a work that I did about 20 years ago with a gloss finish and you can see that the gloss is still in very great shape. Now when I started doing that I checked out a whole bunch of different kinds of varnish to try to get that finish and what I ended up with was Minwax Helmsman Spar Urethane. Um, I tried a lot of them that were very expensive. This one is not expensive. It's readily available and it was the best of the bunch by far. This is a spar urethane, which means it's formulated so that it will uh, move with wood winter and summer as the humidity changes. And it also has some ultraviolet inhibitors in it. They're fugitive, of course, but they'll help. And it's, uh, of course, waterproof. And I use clear gloss. Uh, Read the instructions if you like, but don't shake or stir this. If it's clear gloss, there is nothing in it to settle out, and there is absolutely no reason to stir it or to shake it. Um, now, the important thing about using this particular varnish, this spar urethane, is that it has to be fresh. And there's a date code on the top of the can, and I hope you can see this here, but those, there's a four-digit uh, number right here. In this case, it says 2958. And what that means is that this varnish was made in the 295th day of 2018. So those first three digits represent the number of the day of the year, and the last digit is the last digit in the year itself. So in other words, January 1st would be 0019 uh, if it were this year, and the last day of this year, since this is 2019, would be 3659. Uh, so that's the date code. Check the date code, and if it's anywhere near a year old or older, don't even bother to buy it. You need fresh uh, spar urethane for this to work. Now, as even as, as much of this work that we do, we never ever use up an entire can of this stuff because once you open it, it goes bad pretty quickly. So what we do, uh, instead of opening the can up, is that we take it uh, like this and poke a hole in the rim on this side. And then we'll do the same thing over here and go poke a hole in the rim on this side. And then we have four half pint jars here. And basically what we'll do is just decant this varnish into those four jars. Now we'll use the jars one at a time and uh, you'll notice, by the way, that the color of this varnish as it comes out of the can here, or the urethane, is a kind of a gray-purple color. And that is the color that you'll see when it is fresh. As it begins to age, it will turn a kind of an amber color, and once it turns that amber color, it will begin to lose its ability to really flatten out and give you a fine gloss finish. So those things are important and moving it or, or decanting it into these four different jars helps us a lot. We usually, even though we do this, we usually will end up throwing away probably about a third to a half of the urethane because it will age before we get a chance to use it. It's only a matter of two or three or four weeks once you've opened a can before it starts to turn amber and loses its ability to flatten or to level. Uh, in the way that you really want it to. But right now, I want to make sure that these particular jars are clean and sealed properly. Now notice there's a little bit of varnish right on that edge there that I spilled when I came across. And I'm going to try to get that off of there and clean that. The reason for that is that I don't want any varnish on this seal. Uh, because as you take that on and off of there, it, little bits of it will dry and then they'll get into your finish and you think you're getting um, dust or something in the finish. Actually be little bits of, of dry urethane. We tried preserving these jars by putting various uh, um, gases in. You can buy a particular gas that is intended. I think it's one of the brand names is Bloxygen. Uh, that is supposed to preserve the varnish, uh, the urethane. And we find that it really didn't make a lot of difference. Uh, some, perhaps, 
but I think it's very difficult to get the bloxygen in there without getting oxygen in with it. Uh, we also, since I have a TIG welder, we have uh, pure argon here, and we do sometimes put argon in uh, for the same reason. And if you're very careful about how you do that, I would say it probably does help. But I've never, even doing that, never been able to use an entire can of urethane. We'll use them one at a time. The rest of them will stay in the cabinet in the dark. You don't want to leave this stuff out in the light. It's important that if you read the directions, don't follow them too carefully. Because one of the things it says here is to sand the entire surface very lightly with fine sandpaper before you put on another coat. And they call very fine sandpaper 220. Actually, we sand these with 600 grit. And it's not important to have a, a scratch pattern in there. What is important uh, between coats is to get all of that gloss off so that you have a dull surface that you're putting the next coat on. In, with, with urethanes, you have a mechanical bond. Uh, it's not like lacquer, where you spray one coat of lacquer on top of the other and they chemically bond together. It doesn't do that. So you've got to be sure you have all of that gloss off of there, because if you don't, the next coat you put on there will just peel off. Now we have this cherry vessel that has already had two coats of, of finish put on it. It was sanded to about 400 grit. And then we applied the first coat, which on cherry, of course, soaks in pretty much. We sanded that with uh, some 600 grit paper that I'll show you here in a second. And then we put on another coat. And we can still see, if you can catch the light as, as it uh, uh, comes across, you can still see the grain, especially in the darker areas, through the top of the finish. Now, we're going to sand this with, a, with a, uh, an inertial sander. Uh, this one is the sanding solution from the sanding glove. Uh, it's my preferred one. Uh, there are some copies out there. If it uh, bothers you to buy other people's uh, copies, uh, people that copy other people's work, then you want to find the original sanding solution if you want to purchase one. Uh, it comes with different accessories and so on and so forth, and, and the pads can be changed, uh, and you can change the angles here. This particular pad is a 3-inch pad, and what we're going to be using uh, on that is this 3M 260L P600. 600 grit, it's a stearated uh, uh, abrasive, and we're going to place that on the pad. It's a hook and loop. And we're going to run the, the lathe fairly quickly here. And we're also going to be running a uh, dust collector back here. We have a zero tolerance for dust in this studio. And the way we do that is we have a dust collector set up with two drops, two four inch drops for each lathe. And what we're concerned about here is collecting the dust that floats around in the air. We don't care about any of the chips or any of the shavings. They can fall on the floor or do whatever. We just want the dust that would get into our lungs to go in there. So we've created uh, a kind of a shroud around here by using uh, this plastic and this piece of cardboard down here so that the air that rushes into there has to come across this workpiece. That means that all of the, the dust that we're going to create here is going to be uh, going into the dust collector and none of it will come into our lungs. And we have here a quartz halogen lamp a very strong lamp up here. If there is any dust that floats up in the air, I'll be able to see that in, the, in this light right here. And then I will know that my setup is not quite right and we're not getting all the dust. So we'll turn this on. Sorry for the noise, but we're gonna to have to have that as we work here. So we now have the dust going in here and we're gonna turn this on. We're going to use our initial, our inertial sander to, to sand this very quickly. Check it. Uh, 
it's really important when you sand this that you get all of the gloss off. Now you can see the reflection in the light, you can see that down deep in where we had that, that open grain, we're not going to be able to get down that deep, but we've got the rest of this pretty well done. And right up in here, we didn't, we couldn't get this with the inertial sander, so we're going to use that, that piece of uh, 600 grit 260L. We're going to turn our dust collector back on, and we're going to get that. to go here and we're going to use a foam brush and this is a particular uh, gen j-e-n uh, it looks like an f but that's actually an n gen manufacturing company uh, this is a two inch brush if you look online you can generally find these at a pretty decent price if you buy say a gross at a time uh, we use a lot of them so usually buy uh, about 300 at a time now this piece is big enough that i will not be able to put all of, of the finish on it in one at one particular time, I'm going to have to do sections of it. The reason for that is that this urethane sets up very quickly, and if I do try to do this whole thing and then go back over here, it's, it will have set up so much that the varnish or the, or the urethane will pull, and then we'll have a mess, and that will not work. So we're going to turn the lathe on here. We're going to run this at about, oh, let's say 20, 20 to 30 RPM. And we're going to figure on doing about two to three brush widths down here to start. And we're going to, we're going to get, dip that brush right down in there and get it as full of, of as much varnish as we possibly can. And we're going to twirl it like this so it won't dribble as we come across. And then we're going to go roughly one brush width per revolution as we put that varnish on. Really pretty doggone thick. And we come back over here and go a little ways. Try to get maybe about half of the vessel. All right, now I'm gonna take the brush and I'm gonna do this to make a dry top on the brush. Notice that we've got a lot of varnish, a lot of, of urethane down here, and that's almost dry. So I'm gonna start around, so I'm around the bottom there, and then I'm going to come across at about a quarter of an inch per revolution and at a 45 degree angle here, and I'm putting a little bit of pressure on. But note that the excess varnish is collecting at the lower end of the brush and is dripping off on the cardboard we placed down here. The top corner of the brush isn't quite touching. You don't want that to touch because if it does, it'll plow up a little ridge of varnish as you come across. So I'm going to come over here and I'm just seeing I'm getting to the point where we didn't have all the varnish. So I'm going to quit right there and I'm going to get another load of varnish. I'm going to pick that up and I'm going to start here and go back that way and see if I can pick that up. I, by now, I could not go clear back to the beginning. And I'm going to, while I'm here, I'm going to do this. And again, screed off the excess here. And we're going to come back and overlap just a little bit, place our brush there, and start across again. Now that varnish down at the end where we started, or urethane, is getting to the point where it's going to begin to set up and if we went back and tried to do something with it now to correct a mistake or anything like that we would create ridges that would not level out and what we want is for this finish to level as we go notice we we're losing a lot of the urethane here uh, that's because i put on plenty so i'd be sure to come all the way across here with one pass and be able to get the entire piece done now, as I come across this end here, notice I'm intentionally being very careful to go slow. A uh, beginner's mistake that is often done is when you get to this end, you go off very quickly. Now, I'm going to take the, the brush and see it's very heavily, a lot of varnish here and not a lot there. So we're going to go on the inside and we're going to come across again with the dry end of the brush trailing and the wet end of the brush applying varnish as we go ahead. And then we're going to once again, go very slowly here and not just pop off of this end and make sure that we've got it covered completely. Now we're going to shut the lathe off and turn it by hand while we come back here and catch the light and make sure that we don't have any spots. I'm looking at reflections and I expect to see reflections all over the piece 
If I missed a spot, that would not be uh, reflective there. So that's how we put on the coat. Now we're gonna let the lathe run. Uh, we could slow it down a little bit if you want. We're gonna let it run for 15 minutes and I'm gonna set a timer so I'm sure that we know that it sets uh, uh, sets up for at least 15 minutes before we close the lathe, uh, shut the lathe down. Now that'll guarantee that we don't get any runs if we got any areas that were heavy enough to create runs. Now we're going to do that again. This vessel's a little smaller. It's only about seven inches tall. And I should be able to do the entire vessel in just one pass. So again, we're gonna load that brushway up and then we're gonna twirl it so it doesn't dribble across. And then we're gonna come one brush width per revolution, just getting a load of varnish on this piece back up here. Get this top good. It's gonna have plenty of varnish everywhere. Uh, and we dry off one end of the brush, push it around there so it comes around onto the bottom a little bit, and then comes across. Now, you notice the dripping. See the excess urethane that's dripping off? And again, note that the top corner of the brush is not touching the work. And we're creating a very even, thin coat of urethane across the piece. Come down here, come around very, very slowly, back across this top and get that edge, and then inside again. And that's it.